Corso friends, welcome back to Opus L and I, where we have given in to summer. It happens every August, the overwhelming resignation in the face of yet another 100 degree day. In another few weeks, it'll be cool enough to actually step outside without reenacting that dream sequence from Terminator 2, you know the one. But until then, I am determined to make more garb than I can reasonably wear in the hottest part of the year. And one of my goals moving forward is to work on expanding my 14th century wardrobe now that I have done a decent job of building up other eras. One of my favorite genres of feminine dress in the late 14th century is that of the Bohemian Bathing Beauties, or bathhouse babes. Most of these depictions come from the King Wenceslaus Bible and supposedly show the Guild of Bathhouse Keepers in Bohemia. These bathing beauties are shown wearing meaty length, supportive undergarments with square necklines and thin straps, sometimes with a sash, and they often carry the badges of their office, a bucket, and some kind of sponge or other bathing implement. Sometimes they are shown with others in a scene, most notably grouped around a masculine figure in a wooden bathtub, but mostly they're by themselves. It is up for debate as to whether this was a legitimate occupation or a euphemism for sex work, but either way, it gives us several depictions of supportive undergarments. Many of the dresses I've made in the last year or so have not been self-supporting coat hardies or kirtles, and I've often had the question about how one's chest would have been supported while wearing something like that. This is an answer that is supported a by direct evidence from the period, both in manuscript and material form. So everyone go grab your cuppa and tell me in the comments what you've been drinking. Today I have made a cup of Obadiah steam tea by The Weeping Glass. It is a really interesting tea and may not be to everyone's taste. It is a smoky Lapsang Souchong tea with jasmine, vanilla, and cocoa husk. It is kind of dark and sweet and mysterious, very witchy, very I wish autumn would hurry up and freaking get here already. I like it, it's very good. Let's get into it. Now that I've gotten my folder sliding skills completely honed, it's time to pull out my pattern. I'm starting with the coat hardy pattern I altered. You may remember it from my video where I made the black dress. I know this pattern gives me the support that I want and making the neckline square again will be a piece of cake. Since my coat hardy pattern has no seam allowances included, I can transfer it directly onto the new paper quite easily. I'm also going to shave about a quarter of an inch off the side seams just to make it a tiny bit tighter than the coat is. I will be making this in linen, which has the tendency to warm up and relax after wearing, so I want to make sure that it will stay supportive after that relaxation. I'm also lowering the back and making the straps narrow to make sure that nothing will show if I wear it under another dress and I'll mark each pattern piece with my name and the date. The front piece will be a little more complicated to alter. First, I'm removing the button placket at the front since I plan to lace it closed. Then I'll check the width of the back strap to make sure that the front matches. After fussing with the strap angles, I decided to just pull out my original coat pattern instead. This method of cutting the fabric will result in a square neckline when the strap is rotated up to the shoulder, which prevents the straps from slipping off my narrow shoulders, and the arm side will puff out just a bit, making a nice pocket for your pectoralis major, which is the part of your armpit that often gets cut into when your arm side is too tight. Tiny bit more fussing to make sure I know where I want the lines to sit, and then I will go over them in a different color to make sure I know which one to cut. Since this is a shift, I don't mind if it's not as full as my dresses, so I'm going to cut both pieces the width of the fabric instead of piecing in the gores. 
I'll also cut one each of lining and outside fabric to make sure that the shift has enough layers to be supportive and also opaque. I am not bothering with separate pattern pieces for lining and fashion fabric. I'll just measure out the proper length. I'm aiming for mid calf and mark the bottom from there. I'll cut the pieces out, adding seam allowance, and retrace the sewing lines onto the back half of the folded linen, which I forgot to fill. Sorry. Next up, I will sew the lining pieces together and check for fit issues before I sew the fashion fabric together. Trying the lining on, everything fits almost exactly how I want. There's some gapping at the back neckline, which I can easily fix by changing the angle of the back shoulder seam to take up that slack just a little bit and pinching out a quarter of an inch at the top of the back seam line. I'll transfer those changes to the fashion fabric and also the pattern pieces once I verify that they solve the problem. Once the lining and shell are both sewn up, I can sew them together at the front and neckline. There's a whole process to be able to sew the arm size at the same time, but I didn't feel like getting that fussy, so I'll just turn those and whip stitch them shut by hand later.
After everything is sewn together, I will clip the curves of the neckline, cut the front seam corners, and turn the whole thing right side out and iron it. The hardest part here was making sure I didn't erase the arm side markings on the straps when I pressed the neckline seams. Thank you to all of my current and continuing Kofi members. Your support and the support of all of my members and croissants makes it easier to do what I do and provide quality content for everyone. Thank you so much. Stick around after this brief commercial break for the final touches. To finish the arm size, I will fold each seam allowance in and finger pinch those before pinning them together. After that, I'll do a simple whip stitch to close up those seams. I plan to lace this shut with some lucid cord, so I'm going to need to add eyelets to the front. I'll be spiral lacing it so the eyelets will have to be staggered for that to work. The top two and bottom two will be even, and then the others will be offset in order for the spiral lacing to work. Sewing eyelets isn't hard, but it can be tedious. I'm using a tapered awl to make a hole in the fabric and then stitching that open with a thin silk buttonhole twist. I usually do between 10 and 12 stitches per eyelet. I'm not concerned with covering the entire edge like a satin stitch, I just want the hole to stay open and not fray. We have this modern idea that we need to finish items to perfection, but medieval eyelets were sloppy as heck sometimes. People were sewing for production, not perfection.
I'm machine sewing a half inch turned hem because I'm running out of time before the event. I plan to wear those two and needs must. And I'm the one driving to it, so I can't even finish it in the car. The last thing I need is a sash. My favorite manuscript depiction has a blue sash and I have this leftover blue sari silk from my Blio project. So one quick hem down the middle to join the pieces and then finishing the edges using my new rolled hem foot for my modern machine. I have a pretty silk sash to complete the outfit. Thank you all for coming along with me today. This is a project that I have had in mind for literal years. And in fact, I bought this bucket from a local Cooper with this whole outfit in mind. I'm also looking forward to seeing how this looks under those looser dresses. So stay tuned on my social media for pictures of that. Also, the channel hit 7,500 followers this week. Thank you all so much for your support. You make this all possible. There is one week left as of the public release of this video, which should be September 2nd, 2022, to enter my giveaway to celebrate. I am giving away this navy and pink handmade silk trim, which you may remember from the video where I wove it. The link to that giveaway will be in the description box below. Good luck! If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell if you like taking your chances with YouTube's notifications. If you're interested in finding me on social media, I am at Opus L and I everywhere. And all of those links will be in the description box along with the link to my Ko-fi where you can leave a one-time tip, browse the web shop, or join my membership tiers for additional content and a personal thank you of your very own in my next video. Until next time, be kind, do the work, continue supporting marginalized people, and keep creating. Hoyle!